the 14th of March 2013, a simple car accident when an illegal Israeli settler car speeding along the road, brought illegally on stolen Palestinian land, crashed into the back of an Israeli truck, which had stopped to change a flat tire, resulting in four people being hurt, was later at the behest of angry settlers, prevented as an attack by Palestinian stone playing youth. The truck driver's earlier testimony that he stopped due to a flat tire was replaced with a new reason, being that he had seen stone by the road and an accident that nobody saw suddenly became a terror attack with 61 witnesses, including the police. Over the next few days, over 50 masked Israeli soldiers with attack dogs stormed the local village of Herod in the early hours of the morning and in waves of violent arrests kidnapped the children of the village. In total, 19 children were taken to the infamous G4S secured children's dungeon at Al Jaran and locked up in solitary confinement for up to two weeks in filthy, windowless, one metre by two metre hole in the ground cell with no mattress. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced to the settlers that he had caught the terrorists. The children were violently tortured and sexual threats were made against the female members of their families in order to coerce confessions from the boys. With the confessions and new eyewitness statements, five of the Harris boys were charged with 25 counts of attempted murder each. Even though there were only four people in the car and all are now safe at home, apparently the military court had decided that 25 stones were thrown each with an intent to kill. The five boys, Ali Shamrawi, Mohammed Kled, Mohammed Mahidi Suleiman, Tanasu and Anasu are currently locked up in another G4S secured facility in the Gudo prison where G4S provides the entire central command room. In violation of international law, Israel has turned prisons into money-making enterprises with the boys essentially forced to pay for their own imprisonment. Israel deliberately fails to provide Palestinian prisoners the basic essentials. Edible food, clothes, underwear, shoes and hygiene products, soap and toothbrush. The boys are forced to buy these at the extortionately priced prison shop costing the families over $125 a month to provide the one base to have basic needs in prison. With no evidence of a crime, the military court keeps on postponing the hearing date from one month to the next. Meanwhile, the boys remain caged indefinitely and their families facing financial ruin in the process. The occupation, in its cruelty, doesn't inform families of cancellations. The families spend most of their day queuing and enduring the humiliation at check, then waiting at the court in anticipation of catching a glimpse of their son, only to be disappointed at the end. Not that evidence or lack of it has any bearing in an Israeli military court. A study conducted by the Israeli NGO No Legal Frontiers over a 12-month period, concluded that 100% of Palestinian children brought before the military court are convicted. If the five boys are convicted, they will be locked up for over 25 years. Five young lives ruined with no evidence of a crime, let alone their guilt. We are here to demand the immediate unconditional release of the Harris boys. And we demand Chief O.S. stop its complicity in Israel's crimes against the Harris boys and other prisoners. Chief O.S., why are you helping secure Israel's torture dens when little children are tortured? Chief O.S., why do you help Israel cage children in two metre by one metre holes in the ground? Shame on you, Chief O.S. Shame on you, Chief O.S. Bravo! Bravo! Thank you! 
very many Turkish hunger strikers. Today is a many Turkish 120 day on a hunger strike. On 17 February 2013, Israeli soldiers abducted 33 years old Ayman al-Tabish from his home in Dora, near El Khalid, and caged him at the G4S secured offer prison, indefinitely on, on an illegal ruling administrative detention order with no charge and no trial. To protest, he went on 105 day hunger strike, only stopping when Israel had agreed in writing that they would not renew his administrative detention. Yet, in January 2014, Israel reneged on its written agreement and issued a new administrative detention order. As a result, Ayman started a second hung hunger strike on 28 February 2014. After 70 days, he lost over 25 kilograms in weight and his condition is so critical that he has been moved twice to, to different hospitals. His eyesight is now suffering and he was developed kidney and stomach problems. He can no longer feel his limbs as numbness overtakes them. Today, Ayman Tabish completes his 120 days on hunger strike.